Hello, just a quick video here. I, you may have seen the video where I uh, made these custom gobo wheels. Quick, simple mod um, that made these fixtures look a lot nicer, in my opinion. I've used them for one show. They did great, and I like them a lot, but I want more. Um, I want to have uh, rotating indexable gobos. That means that each one of these little gobos on on this will be able to spin, and the projected effect will do the same. Um, that's going to be quite an undertaking compared to these little um, custom discs. So this is a quick video on the very beginning of that process and what the very beginning of processes like this look for me, projects like this rather. Um, so yeah, it's just a quick little handheld phone video um, describing some of my ideas, thoughts, and uh, plans for this. So hopefully it gets done. I don't know for sure, but we're going to put it up and hopefully that'll be motivation for me to actually complete the project. So I have everything sort of unscrewed here. We'll take this off. This is the whole assembly that does the gobo situation in here right now. Like I said, I have everything unscrewed and unplugged. It's all just kind of sitting here. So we'll take this off. This is our current gobo setup. So right now, the gobos are built right into the plate that carries them. You know what I mean? Um, so what we would do is instead of having the gobo straight printed onto this, we'll print a separate carrier plate, which will be this guy, which rotates thusly. And um, little individual gobos on little assemblies that sit in holes in here that are turned by a gear that's in the center of this. And this will be mounted on a shaft, or it'll probably have a shaft printed on with it that's hollow and has another shaft go through it that turns that gear that turns the gobos. Um, and we'll have to do a couple things here. So, like, th this motor won't be able to do any of that, of course. Um, so we'll probably replace that with a 608. Um, that's going to need here. This guy's going to need drilled out because it's going to need to be a fair bit bigger to be able to, you know, put a shaft. It's it's like 7 mil right now. I'm thinking we'll try to drill it out to maybe 10 millimeter. And uh, this will be the bearing for the outer shaft. And then it'll have like a G2 belt and one of those tiny little NEMA, um, NEMA 8s steppers to rotate the whole wheel. And another one that has... Uh, that's attached to the shaft that goes down through the center of that that'll rotate the actual gobos and when when I want to rotate the wheel without rotating the gobos I just spin them at the same speed um, the control is super simple because then I just set an offset uh, between the disc rotation and the gobo rotation I offset it and then if I turn the wheel and turn everything at the same speed they'll stay all indexed in the same position you know, throughout the movement and all that. Uh, control's easy. Um, anyway, from there, uh, we're going to have to redo all of the controls because, well, for one, this is a stepper driver short. Um, we could probably get by, maybe, maybe not, with the driver that's driving this little unipolar guy for one of them, but we need two. So... We're going to have to redo the controls entirely. Um, yeah, so that'll be a custom PCB. I'm trying to decide whether this control scheme is going to stay the same because doing that custom PCB means I can I can make it whatever I want. I can make it all controlled over the network um, and make them all networked and uh, not have to deal with this. Um, I also have to be careful about how many wires go up through all this because if we get too many more in there, Things aren't going to want to move, and we'll be working things harder than they want to be worked, and um, wires will get stressed and things like that. Uh, we'll have to try to minimize that thickness to give us the most space possible. We have a good bit. Um, it's, it's not too bad. So Now, some challenges we may face with, uh, with this guy the carrier and gobo assembly. We may have to reduce the total number of gobos that are on here just to make sure that all the gear assemblies can fit and not interfere with each other. 
but that's okay because I will only need one gobo to make up for both of these, one gobo for both of these, um, things like that. I don't really need all that many more gobos, I just want to be able to move them, you know? So, um, we'll probably have to reduce the number of gobos on these or just see if uh, we can make a way, come up with a way to make them all fit. Now, we're going to want these gobos to be indexable. We want to have, we want to be able to tell them to go to known positions for, for our cues and all that. We don't just want them being anywhere at any one time. So we'll need to home them in addition to homing this wheel and the color wheel. So right now, these guys just run themselves to a screw until they skip a bunch of steps. They run the motor for, like, an amount of time that they know it will have gone around at least one time. It hits that end stop, and then from there, you know where that motor is at. Um, but since all of this, we're also going to make this wheel be able to rotate continuously to get the colors faster and make effects better. Um, same with this guy and the indexable gobos. We have to home them. Now, like I had previously mentioned, we can only have so many wires going down here, so ideally we'll do that with one sensor. Now the way we'll do that is with a clever homing routine. So first we'll home the color wheel, then we will home the, uh, the gobo carrier, and then we will home the gobos. We can do all of those separately and use just one sensor with one wire going down into here instead of three. Um, even doing it with three would be probably just as complicated as doing it with one. Um, this won't take all that long. I think this will work well. So what we'll do is um, on each disc there'll be a little magnet and a Hall effect sensor will be over here. So we'll home this guy. It'll home on the Hall effect sensor and then move its magnet out of the way. Then we'll home the gobo carrier. Um, home it once, rotate the gobos and make sure it doesn't change it if it does doesn't change it, rather. If it does, um, make it so that the gobo is in a place where it's not tripping the Hall effect sensor, and then home this again. From there, you'll have a home. Um, put the homing magnet for this on the opposite side of the gobo with the homing magnet on it. Rotate to the gobo with the homing magnet, and home the gobo. And uh, that ought to get us homed. Um, considering using stepper drivers with step loss detection, I don't know if it's worth it. I mean, just noticing that they're out and rehoming them manually will probably serve the same, you know, purpose. But, uh, yeah. We also have to be concerned about materials here. This is going to be a lot of 3D printed parts and a really high intensity uh, beam of light, of focused light. Um, I think we're going to print with uh, uh, polycarbonate. Um, this will be my first time printing with polycarbonate, so that's that's going to be uh, interesting. It's more thermally resistant than the other plastics that I have on hand. Um, I'm hoping they'll be thermally resistant enough to not melt under the uh, the added heat from the absorbed light that they'll be experiencing. So yeah, I think that's most of it. Um, I'm going to provide more sort of formal documentation of this whole process as it gets rolling. So keep an eye out and watch for more videos.